Uh-huh, I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You all listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only, Steve Harvey. Mm, got a radio show. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Grateful for it. Comes with a huge amount of responsibility. I didn't really know I was going to have to be this responsible. You know, um, can I share something with you all? I started out um, to finally I had gotten on track and was able to see a way to even uh, pursue my dream. It has been a long, a long trip that I've been on, and I've gone through so many phases of it. It, it is rewarding along the way to accomplish your dreams. What I'm saying is this, let, let, me, let me put it together because I got so much running through my head right now. You know, it's, it's one thing to accomplish your dream, but there's joy in the process of achieving it. See, some people are so caught up in the goal, the final goal, that they find no joy, no enjoyment in the process. If you have found what it is you want to do and you strike out on that journey, please understand you are far more blessed than the average person. To know what it is you really want to do to find your work in life, your purpose, to find out what direction you want to go in is such a blessing. The average person, if you sit down and talk to them, oftentimes don't have their life on track. And it'd be some people that you look at that you think got it going on because of their appearance, their swagger. Oh, they walk like it. They talk like it. They look like it. But if you sit down and talk to the average person, the average person, man, does not know what their purpose is, has not discovered what they want to do, and have no idea how to get there. If you are on the other side of that, if you understand your purpose, if you have an idea of what you want to be, and you are on your way there, you are truly blessed. And in that blessing, you must recognize it as a blessing. You must recognize the fact that you are on the right side and that there should be a sense of accomplishment and a feeling of pride in you that you are on track to accomplish your goal. See, what used to happen was sometimes I used to keep my nose so on the grindstone that I wouldn't even look up and realize, man, hey, man, I know you're trying to get here, but Steve, hold on, man. Can't you see what you've done so far? Can't you find just some joy in the process? 
See, a lot of us lose the joy of the blessings God has given us because we looking at the end talking about I ain't there yet. You on your way. I'm going to give you an example. I had a friend who told me that they wanted to be a millionaire. And they asked me some questions. And I told them. So they started the process. And I am telling you, this dude works extremely hard. So about a year later, we were talking. He had found this business. He had uh, set his goal. And he was working towards it. Then about two years later, I ran up into him again. We were talking about it and everything. He said, man, I really, really appreciate the advice. He said, man, but this is this is it's all jacked up, man, because I still ain't made that million I was talking about. I said, well, hey, man, just, just keep at it. It's coming. He said, man, keep at it. Man, you know how long I've been doing this? Been two years now. And I didn't say that to him, but I said to myself, yeah, two years. He said, man, I've been grinding so long, man, it just... It ain't happening for me. I said, wait a minute, man. Hold, hold on, hold on. I said, about how much you making right now a year? Man, about 250000 I, I I quit breathing. I said, well, my man, two years ago, you didn't have a clue. Two years later, you making a quarter of a million dollars? I said, man, do you understand how blessed you are? I said, man. Your family was about to get put out two years ago. You done bought a house? Yeah, man, but this ain't the house I really want. Whoa, 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 partner. Whoa, I got that. I got that. House you really want, Mike? Mike call five, eight million. I don't know. But, man, y'all got a house. You making the payments. You driving. You ain't out no more. I said, hold on, man, you got to stop. I said, you got to stop. I said, man, because right now, man, you, you coming across as real ungrateful to me. And so he said, man, why are you tripping like that, man? Man, you act like don't nobody want to have nothing but you. I said, whoa, man, where you going with this conversation? I said, oh, I didn't come to you. I just came to you and asked you how you doing. And I'm trying to point out to you that the journey that you started on, that you are on your way and you are in the process of accomplishing your goals. And can you not feel some joy and some pleasure in your accomplishment? Quit tripping on the fact that you ain't made a million yet. You on your way. You done went from, yo, he thought this dude was making $15,000 a year. You making a quarter of a million dollars in two years, man. Come on, man. Can't you see? Can't you see? So he said eventually, ah, man, I kind of see what you're saying, but that ain't about nothing to me because I not ran up into him a year and a half later. How you doing, man? Man, I sure wish I'd appreciated my life when I had it like that. I said, what you mean had it like that? Man, I just fell on some hard times, man. I'm right back where I was. And then we talked. I said, hey, man, don't worry about it. I said, once you know how to accomplish something, I said, you just reapply the same principles and start on over again. Man, you know how hard it is to be to start over? Okay, my man, hold up, partner. You finna do yourself like this again? First, you wasn't grateful for what you had. Now you're looking at the fact that you might have to start over, and you know how hard it is to start over. Maybe God said, okay, you ain't happy with this? Okay, then handle it your way. You obviously ain't happy with the way I'm bringing it into your life. You want to handle it your way? Go ahead and handle it. Because he will let you have it your way. Can I tell you that? He will let you do it exactly the way you want to it because he gives us all the power of choice. So then maybe he said, okay, you don't appreciate the way I'm doing it. You don't like the favor I'm showing you. You think it's taking too long. I'm going to let you do it your way. I'm not going to turn my back on you. I'm just going to let you do it your way. Just just say maybe he said that. And now he right back where he was. So what I tried to get the young cat to understand was, man, appreciate your life for what it is. Because like um, Life Jennings got that song that he got out off this album, I Still Believe. It could have been worse. And now that it is worse, what's on your mind now? Folks. If you are on that side of life where you have figured out what you want to do, you know how you're going to get there and you know your purpose, you're accomplishing what the majority of people never, ever do. So be grateful for your process. Don't tumble yourself. Don't throw yourself off the cliff. It's going to be all right. Success takes a measure of time. It is not easy. If success were easy, everybody would be successful. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your undivided attention, please? There is something about to go down that I need to share with you. It's called the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In the words of nephew Tommy, be ye ready. Don't know whether he does that or why he says that, but I thought I'd use it today. Felt good. Be ye ready uh, is the pronoun that we're going with. That's not a pronoun, though, is it? Why am I using English lessons today when I don't know none? <laughs> All I know is I before E except after C. That's the yeah. only thing I remember. And that's because it rhymes. I is sometimes why. Mm. I remember that, but I don't never remember that one. Because every time I see your name and it's got a Y on it, I say ye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley Strawberry. Welcome back, Steve. Yeah, back, back, back we in love you. again. Yeah, Carla Pharrell. You. Hey, Steve, what's happening? What's up, girl? Junior. Morning, Unc, my mentor. Yeah, yeah. Nephew Tommy. Doggy, doggy, dog. Top of the morning, my baby. Augie, doggy, dog. Or yeah. did you mean? You on a delay, dog? <laughs> No, I I I hit my button. Oh, my bad. You meant oh. top doggy. of the morning, Uncle Steve. You meant doggy, doggy, doggy dog, not I'm auggie. back. <laughs> I will say this though. What, Steve? I'm back, but I'm very sore. Oh. And uh, still in some pain. Hmm. But I'm pushing through because the God I serve made me a lion. That's right. Yeah. Amen. I'm He's a, a healer, healer, healer. And, and what were the meds you were on that you told us about earlier? Oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> and then y'all told me that wasn't a name of it. I said, well, what the hell is it? <laughs> I love the confidence. A noun. <laughs> you got me on this Man, oxymoron. What is y'all doing to the meat over there? <laughs> oh, Steve. Focus, focus. You cooking I'm at meat the ranch. this early? Wow. You cooking meat early This in the early? Morning? I start, hey, when I'm at the ranch with these boys, I start to barbecue in the moment I wake up. Uh-huh. <laughs> I barbecue all day. <sighs> it's six o'clock. The fire hot already? Dog, I've been up. I made this fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making the fire in the dark this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Dog, I come to be country. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you there for? I praise God for this dog. I wish I wasn't doing the radio show because I'd be fishing. <laughs> Okay, but you are doing the radio show. You are. And I'm mad about it. <laughs> well, Steve, you were missed. People love you. Yeah. They want to hear you. They they miss you. Were missed. That's we good. missed you. I had I had surgery. What happened? Yeah, tell us Monday. about it. I had surgery. I had hernia surgery, okay. and uh, I wasn't anticipating the swelling and the pain. I really wasn't, because, you know, when I got out the hospital on Monday. I went straight to Four Seasons to have lunch because I was still under that hospital medication. And I could walk. Boy, let me tell you something. That evening when that hospital medicine wore off, uh-huh. yeah. boy, I was trying to, I, was, I had everybody down at that drugstore buying that oxymoron. I'm telling <laughs> it's, you that. Right you now, oxy, it. the okay. oxycontin, I don't take stuff with the word cotton in it. I've been boycotting <laughs> cotton ever oh. since lately. <laughs> okay, well, it's Steve, surgery, it ain't oxymoron, though, surgery <laughs> that didn't ring a bell to you, that you should, you know, take it easy a little bit? All well, right. they told me. <laughs> All right, hang on, hang on to that thought. We got to take care of some things right here. Coming up at 32 after the hour, uh, trending political news, and we'll get back to Steve's story. That's coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, before we get to the rest of your surgery story, we got to tell you this. In trending political news, during a meeting in the Oval Office, President Trump told George Stephanopoulos of uh, ABC News that he wouldn't necessarily alert the FBI if approached by a foreign country with information in, on the 2020 election opponent. Uh, the, <laughs> this boy's great. Wait a minute, is, that, is 2000, that boy don't let you down at all. History is repeating itself, isn't it? Uh, right. the, the president uh, the president said it's not an interference. They have information. I think I'd take it. Take a listen. Your campaign this time around, if foreigners, if Russia, if China, if someone else offers you information on an opponent, should they accept it or should they call the FBI? I think maybe you do both. I think you might want to listen. I don't, there's nothing wrong with listening. If somebody called from a country, Norway, we have information on your opponent. Oh, I think I'd want to hear it. You want that kind of interference in our elections? It's not an interference. They have information. I think I'd take it. If I thought there was something wrong, I'd go maybe to the FBI. If I thought there was something wrong. But when somebody comes up with oppo research, right? They come up with oppo research. 
oh, let's call the FBI. The FBI doesn't have enough agents to take care of it. But you go and talk honestly to congressmen. They all do it. They always have. And that's the way it is. It's called oppo research. It's called collusion. That's what it's called. It's called unfit How to be stupid. president. It's called, you don't know nothing. <laughs> oh is unbelievable. God. Yeah, he really is. The oh sad part of this mm -hmm. is the Republican Party will act like this is norm. They oh, yeah. Danger, they did. yeah. The danger of Donald Trump getting another four years will be he will change the way politics is viewed and handled worldwide. Allies won't take America's word for nothing. It, it, it would just be chaotic because the way this dude leads, we can't take four more years of the division that he's created in this country. The sad part of it is there are so many Republicans that's going, you know what, he's just fine. But you cannot hear this type of thing and think this is who you want. I don't understand. But it the is, Republican though. Party is supposed to be the moral party, the GOP. Uh, the party of morality and religious and upholding the Constitution. Hmm. And you let this guy make all these types of statements that borderline on damn near treason, collusion, yeah. or whatever you want to call Seriously. it. And they okay with it. And you have to go, why? Yeah. Why is it okay? Because if um, President Obama had done any oh, of this. Please. Right. Any of this. Please. Please. Any. <laughs> So Are you kidding me, man? Yeah, any of this? Yeah, he couldn't even entertain the thought of doing any of this. He would Talking have been to Russia. Yeah, about come on. An opponent from an election? I don't give a damn come if on. it is Norway. Yeah, He's but Norway. But, you know America? it's not Norway. It's Russia. He, he just, just used yeah, that as an yeah. example. Throw <laughs> us off. Say Norway. Yeah. yeah, well, Norway ain't probably might not have none. But if, so if Russia had it, you're saying the same thing. All right, okay, enough about him. Back to your surgery. That was way more interesting. Yeah. We're giving him <laughs> way too much yeah. time. Talk about him. Yeah. He is truly unfit. Yeah. So why y'all no, think this going to change? He, he's not the guy. He's no, mm -mm. no. So you were saying. But my surgery was a success. You had hernia uh, surgery, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. It's the swelling and the uh, soreness was a little bit more than I had bargained for. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm used to bouncing right back. It's been a little bit more challenging than I thought. And uh, but I'm fine, you know. God is good. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, coming out of anesthesia, I probably ain't who you want. <laughs> what did why, you do? do why, you Steve? Why? Yeah, my wife said, Steve, I had to go in there. <laughs> How she had to go she, in there? What she happened? said it was six doctors standing around you. She said, I don't even remember this. She said, mm -hmm. Steve told all them people, y'all get out my face where my wife. <laughs> oh my goodness. I want all y'all out my face where my wife. <laughs> she says, Steve, Marjorie told me, Marjorie says, Steve, I have no doubt that you love me. You was talking to them people so crazy. She said, and then you just held me for, really, Steve, and I kid you not, 10 straight minutes. You wouldn't Aww. let me go. That baby. I don't yeah. remember none of that. She yeah, could have just been telling me something. Yeah. Strong, man. That's the strong. It, is it was strong. nice, though. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I told the anesthesiologist, I said, right before you to administer the drug, I want you to tell me you're putting it in. She said, okay. She said, Mr. Harvey, I'm about to administer the drug. I said, do you know Jesus? She mm -hmm. said, yes, I do. I said, let him use you. Huh. Now, I say that to all my doctors. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Now, if you don't know yeah. Jesus, you can find somebody else to do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. God works through doctors. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I don't want you to get me wrong. If it's a Jewish doctor, I'm fine with that. I don't, I don't want anybody to misunderstand that I'm saying if you You're don't. You're talking the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm just talking about God, really. Yeah. You and know, your I'm belief system. I'm accepting of all faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you're a Muslim. Yes. Mm -hmm. But do you believe in God? I need you to have some faith in God. You're somebody greater than you. And right. I just ask all of them, you know, just let him use you. And he mm -hmm. always do. That's my prayer before I go in. And Absolutely. it works. And That's I'm back. And I'm I'm out here. And today is the day that we get started with the boys. Uh -huh. yeah. I got 240 camp. boys at the camp. I just added another young man from a foster care program who couldn't get in the program. He's out of foster care mm -hmm. at 18, right? Oh. But he's 19 years old. And he mm -hmm. wanted to come to the camp. But the rule is you have to be 18. But I accepted him yesterday at the golf tournament. Because he uh -huh. came out to the golf tournament. He just wanted to meet me. He said he never had a mentor. 
and he wants a mentor. So I put him in the camp anyway for nice, today. Steve. So he'll That's be down great. there today. Mm-hmm. I added another boy last week from the Family Feud audience, a mm-hmm. uh, 15-year-old kid. I was talking to him. He said, man, I always wanted to meet you. I said, how's your mom? But she's at work. My a guardian bought me. I said, where's your dad? He said, who's that? I said, you don't have a father? He said, he don't love me. And he just busted out crying. Oh, man. Aww. So I said, he at the camp. So he'll be at the camp today. Those nice. are the things we're you. doing, man. Yeah. And yeah. you God love is good, this. man. This is your- oh, man. You love this. Besides Christmas, yeah. this is your favorite this time of year, Steve. This really is. This mm-hmm. your week. This really is, yeah. Yeah. You working through, look at you, God, doing God's work. Come on, Steve. <laughs> Come on, man. I love that. Yeah. After third. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, hang on, everybody. Uh, Post your comments at steveharveyfm.com. Coming up next, the nephew's in the building to run that prank back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment news. Cuba Gooding Jr. says he did not grope a woman in a bar and will turn himself in to the NYPD today, okay? Wow. Yeah, plus in other entertainment news, Justin Bieber says he was playing about the Tom Cruise challenge. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm to glad hear I that. Bet you were. All my money was on Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't want none of that. Yeah, uh-uh. Oh. <laughs> First, the nephew is here to run that prank back. What you got, Ness? My dog. Oh, my about your dog. dog. Roof. My dog. Shirley. Shirley. Oh, huh. Shirley. You should always stop doing dog impressions. What? That was really? a good crying dog. Yeah, that was a yeah, good that was crying, a good crying dog. Yes, yeah, thank you can do crying you. dogs, but no more bark. <laughs> but just do crying dog. Uh uh-uh. uh. I just. Shirley. <laughs> All right, let's go, cat. My dog. Oh, you haters. Hello? Hello, uh, is this apartment 18C? Yeah, this this 18C. Hey, man, my name's Virgil. Uh, who, who, who is this right here? Who is, who is this? You speaking to Marcus? What's going on? Okay, Marcus, let me ask you something, man. Y'all, y'all, y'all done messed up. Y'all, y'all done got Apollo arrested last night on some trumped up charges, man. Hold on, I'm lost here. What, what, what is this you talking about? You got Apollo arrested last night on some trumped up charges. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you sure you died the right number, I man? I got this... the right number, man. Y'all, you, you, and, you, and, you and 18C, ain't you? Yeah, okay, this 18C. Now, tell me, now, now what is this about Apollo? Who is Apollo? I don't, I don't know what you're talking you, about. You got, y'all got Apollo arrested last night on some trumped-up charges. You know, now he downtown, and, 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 and evidently somebody pressing charges. So now I got to figure out how we going to, I'm going to get Apollo out of jail. Hold on, hold on, Bob. Listen, no listen, you right call here, it, I need you call to go downtown hey, and man, go on and drop the charges so Apollo can come on. Pump the brakes, boss. Listen what you're saying now. You calling me about somebody that I don't even know. I ain't even, I don't know no Apollo. You know, I, I, I apologize for your homeboy. And 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 then they're saying that's going down, but I, I don't know nobody named Apollo. I really don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. So, okay, you know. so y'all 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 ain't called the police last night. Ain't nobody called no police. You you ain't called. You are gonna sit here and lie to me and tell me you ain't called no police last night? L- let's take this back. Now now, what's your name, man? My, my name is Virgil. And now now, how you come about getting my number? Don't you worry about how I got your number. I got it. You the one. I know you the one got Apollo arrested on these trumped up charges. Don't worry. Now hold on. How you know? Where is? Well, how you know where I live? Cause I live above you. I live in 19C. 19C. 19. So, are you the one that got the loud barking dog all hours That's of the night? Apollo. My dog is Apollo. My God. Apollo, man, you got me thinking that you talking about some human being. You sitting here calling me about some animal, some dog. Listen, listen, man, man, first of all. Nah, evidently you pressing charges. Hey, listen, you going down there to get my dog out of jail, man. Evidently you need to listen to what you talking about, man. You calling me about some animal? Listen, we call the front desk people about disturbance. Every time we look around, we hear your dog. So you might need to take it over with whoever that's in charge with the apartment complex because that's who we inform about your loud dog. Now, you know, you calling me, how you got my number, I don't know. But you need to check this out and, and, and talk with the people that's in charge of the apartment complex. I'm taking it up with the person that could, that filed a complaint and got my dog arrested last night. Now, my dog down there on some Trump really? charges. Really? Man. Really? They didn't read, they really? didn't read Apollo his rights or nothing like that. Really? You really talking? Listen to what you're saying, man. Out the house, man. And, and it's all this cause of you. 
man, I think you need to, uh, you you need some counseling or something, boss, because you talking about a dog. How can a dog get arrested? You need to. Uh, <laughs> this is crazy. Listen, I, I I don't think we got anything else to talk about, man. Because uh, yeah, we got we got to talk about Apollo, man, and how how you gonna go down there and get him out of jail, and you need to have him be here back this, by the this, this evening. I I ain't finna go through this without my dog being here. This man sounds crazy. Baby, this man calling me about a dog being arrested. This is the dog that be barking. It's Apollo, it's, man. Apollo is a, is, a, is a family member. And you done got him arrested, man. For, for what? Hey, man, Why but, would you do something like that? Man, how about this? You and that dog. Don't be calling me no more talking to me about some dog that I ain't got no control over. You need to take this over the police or whoever call. Ain't nobody call no police. Did you just say Apollo? Man, listen. Did you just say that? You heard what I said. Okay, okay. Hey man, I'm I'm not trying to argue. Okay, look, look. Let's let's just, let's just do this here. Is it any way you could just come down there with me this evening and drop the charge? Come down well. Come, come to the police station, man. Well, Apollo at dog. Look, 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 dog. He down. Listen, listen. Okay, I'm not trying to holler. He down there on some trumped up charge. You, you can't even pick him out in a lineup if you want. Like, Apollo clean. I can't he believe it. He got no pride convictions, man. I can't believe. Man. It. I can't believe. Like it. That. Uh, uh, listen, man. Do you really hear what you're saying? Now, I know they say man, uh, uh, best friend is a dog, but you're taking this a little bit too far. Now, you need to really listen to what you're talking about. You need to have all this, what you got a problem with, with the folks at the front desk and the police, if they do got your dog. This really don't make any sense right now to me. Now, I, I apologize once again about your dog, but um, I think we have our uh, business finished right hey, man, now. Hey, man, let me I, tell you something. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you this right here, okay? Uh, uh, Marcus, right? Yeah. Okay, let me tell you this here. You try to testify against him. Try to testify against against Apollo and see what happens. What in the world are you Are you? Listen, man, I'm going to tell you like this. you, Apollo, anything else that you got to say about this situation right here. You found my number. You found. You know where I live. You just come see me. You, you, you really want that? I'm about to be through with this phone call, man. i tell you what. i tell you what. Let me say this right here. I'm gonna say this right here to you. You try to you try you try to get on the stand and testify against Apollo, and I promise you, dog, you're gonna have some problems on your hands. You hear me? Listen, you really talking some nonsense right now. Do you really hear what you saying to me? Apollo is a dog. I know he a dog. He my dog. You know what? I tell you what. Hey man, how that uh how that pretty little wife of yours doing? The one that be at home while you going to work all day. What the f- you just say to me? How is that pretty little wife of yours that be gone, that be at home when you gone? Who, 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 what's, your, what's your name? Who I already told you my name, Bird. Check this. 19C, where you at, right? Please that's believe where I'm that's, at. Well, please believe that's where we about to meet right now. Because now the man is going to come up here talking to me about my wife. So if it's any other dog you got up in the place, please believe that dog is going to get up right along with your Okay. Well, I got, I got, you, I got one more thing before you. Man, you one thing you need to know before you get here. You ain't got to say to me because you ain't took this a little too far around with me and a dog. Now you trying to talk about what's going on in my household and my wife? Please believe 19C is where you about to find me. Okay. Well, l- 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 let me tell you who else up here in 19C that's waiting on you. All of them about to get up. Who else is all up in 19C? Okay. Well, well, let me tell you who else in here. You want to know who else in here? Man. Now, I'm finna tell you this here, nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show is up in here in 19 C. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> nephew. <laughs> this is nephew Tommy. <laughs> God. Man, you got me cussing, man. My mama be listening to this station. Your neighbor Gerald got Gerald me to thank you. you about your neighbor down there. Man. man. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Hey, man, you got to tell me this, baby. What's the baddest radio station in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show and Nephew Time is Crazy. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Nephew. Coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, in today's entertainment news, Cuba Gooding Jr. will turn himself in to NYPD today for allegedly groping a woman in a New York nightclub. But on camera, he insists he did nothing wrong, and there's hard evidence to prove it. Now, according to TMZ, 
Cuba is uh, expected to be booked for a misdemeanor charge of forcible touching. Cuba says the calm, uh, the claim that he grabbed a woman's breast Sunday night at Magic Hour Rooftop Bar and Lounge in Manhattan is absolutely untrue. He says he was there partying with friends and posed for pictures with fans, but says no one was touched inappropriately, but uh, and not even by accident. Cuba says there's also surveillance video that will show he's innocent and he will trust the system. All right. So, okay. I, you know what? what's troubling is you can make this accusation and they just issue a warrant for your arrest? That's what it looks uh, like. Well, he turned himself in, yeah. so he's cooperating with the investigation, mm -hmm. with the uh, special victims unit. So, And if he says he has surveillance uh, video... Well, the club does, where he was. They have yeah. surveillance videos, so he's going to wait. He yeah. says that's going to prove him innocent. But here's what, what the troubling part of it is. If they find a man innocent mm -hmm. and a man is not guilty mm -hmm. or a woman is not guilty of a crime and they were accused of the crime and they find out that the woman or man was not guilty of it, the innocent. person who accused them, they get to just walk away. Very That's no point. penalty. Yeah. Ain't nothing happening. If you accuse a person and it comes to find out that they're innocent. And I'm just, that that's troubling, right. man. That's troubling, you know. And I'm it not is. saying I'm because I'm friends with Cuba and I like the brother, but I'm just saying as as he as it bears out, let's suppose that they find out through surveillance footage that he is innocent. Mm -hmm. Now, if he's guilty, he he got to pay. Right. But mm -hmm. if you're innocent, what happens to the person who made the accusation? Do, what happens to them? Well, yeah, we have to wait and find out. Um, when that, the yeah. investigation yeah, finds out. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My bad, Cuba. Yeah. Yeah. God Hope, don't do it. Hopefully yeah. it'll be more than that. But, you know. yeah, based on past situations, uh, it won't be. But hopefully this didn't happen. And uh, if it did, you know, like let justice take its course. Um, That's right. In other entertainment news, Steve, we all knew uh, that this couldn't be real. Justin Bieber says the challenge he threw down for Tom Cruise was just a joke. On Sunday, uh, Justin sent out a very bizarre tweet asking UFC head Dana White to set up a rumble in the octagon. He even suggested to Tom, listen, if you don't take this fight, you're scared. But yesterday, Justin Bieber admitted that Tom Cruise, uh, you know, who's 58, uh, would, would kick his butt. He added that if Tom had accepted the challenge, he'd have to get in some really good shape. So why did he send out the tweet in the first place, people are asking. Well, he just finished watching an interview with Tom Cruise and had the Hollywood star on his mind. Yeah. So he, he had Tom, Tom Cruise on his then. mind, yet. Yeah. You must ain't seen him run in Mission Impossible. Yeah. <laughs> that Born? run 30 minutes. He in shape. And he does all his own stunts. Yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. Well, you know. At 58, that's really good. After you get yeah. through smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs> you said out that and tweet it, And it well. Yeah. <laughs> and you see that tweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right after that. That tweet don't make playing. no damn sense. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tom, I didn't mean that. I don't let 50 something fool you now. Yeah, that's no. Ethan, baby. Mission Impossible. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, Steve, let's uh, get to the headlines, please. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Thank you very much, Steve. Thanks, everybody out there. This is Ann Tripp with the news. Here we go. On Capitol Hill, the House Oversight Committee has voted to hold Attorney General William Barr and Commerce Secretary William Ross uh, in contempt of Congress for failing to turn over subpoena documents. However, President Trump, he's using his executive privilege in connection with requests for those documents. The ones we're talking about, actually, are related to his administration's recent decision to add a question about citizenship to the upcoming census form. The upcoming census form will say, are you a citizen of the United States? It's never said that before. Even so, though, President Trump says he doesn't understand really what all the fuss is about. I think it's totally ridiculous that we would have a census without asking. But the Supreme Court is going to be ruling on it soon. 
I think when a census goes out, you should find out whether or not, and you have the right to ask whether or not somebody is a citizen of the United States. Trump says he expects the matter to be ultimately decided by the courts. Uh, Democrats are against the census question because they say it's a way to frighten minorities into not taking part in the system. If you don't uh, not, uh, say that you acknowledge five people in this house or whatever, or you have four people in your home, well, you get less representation in Congress and stuff like that. Also, you're more hesitant to a uh, vote. And uh, one of the uh, there is a uh, word that there was a Republican strategist who said that to have a census a, a census question that said citizenship would also make make things better. They say for white people, they use that term that would be better for whites in this country. The wife of former Red Sox slugger David Ortiz says that he's continuing to recover after being shot in the back in a bar in his native Dominican Republic. However, he's listed in guarded condition and is expected to remain in intensive care for the time being because once he got here uh, from the Dominican Republic, once he got to Boston, he was uh, also and he also went again and underwent another uh, surgery. There's no word now out of the DR uh, about that. There is a total of six suspects, however, under arrest in the Dominican Republic in connection with Ortiz. Ortiz's attempted murder, including, they say, the alleged shooter. Still no word of a motive, but they say the alleged shooter got $7,800 to shoot Ortiz in the back. This is sad. The New York Times says it turns out that the master recordings of some of the greatest musicians in American music history were destroyed in a fire that ripped through Universal Studios back in 2008. They're just admitting it now. The report says the recordings were in a vault, which included about a half a million songs, some dating back as far as the 1940s. And the master recordings lost includes the works of Billie Holiday, Louis Armstrong, Chuck Berry, Aretha Franklin, Ella Fitzgerald, so many other great singers. It's just gone. Looks like a drug a suspect in Florida says that uh, the old adage is as plain as there's a nose on your face is wrong. He insists that the white powder up and around his nostrils was not his cocaine. I guess he thought it was fairy dust. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In trending sports news, game six of the NBA Finals tonight. Junior, what you got? What you thinking? What's on your mind? You know, um, uh, Tommy, uh, KD has surgery. So let's, you know, let's go ahead and send our condolences. He did have surgery. It was successful on his Achilles okay. tendon. You know, so he's going to be out for about eight to 12 months or so. So um, Really? Yeah, man. You know, he's going to miss probably another season. He's going to miss the NBA season. You know, Kawhi wow. Leonard had the same injury. He did. That's yeah, what they Kawhi said. Kawhi had the that, exact Junior. same injury. So he's going to be out, but he's still going to probably sign somewhere, and he's probably going to get a max deal anyway. He's just that good. Yeah. Yeah, They'll wait a year on him. Yeah, they'll They'll wait a year. year, You'll wait a year for him to come back. Yeah. But game Mm. six is tonight. Any any suits, any thoughts? Yeah. I'm pulling for Golden State. And you know why I'm pulling for Golden State now? Because when KD went down and the crowd started cheering, that, that ticked me off, man. Now, the players... To the players on the uh, Raptors came. Oh, they was what y'all yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. What you don't clap for that. What's wrong with y'all? And they yeah. were very, you know, because they feel they they the cats that's actually in the arena that goes to war. They don't want nobody to go down like that because it could be them. Mm. But after Toronto, after them Canadians uh-huh. did that but- and booed that and cheered that brother, I said, okay, I'm through. Let's go on back to Golden State. Let's warm their ass. Let's head on up north and cook their ass. But wait a minute, Steve. It's a lot of warming and cooking. No, I said it. But uh, wait, wait, uh, Steve. Let Junior tell him what Quake said uh, yesterday. Your boy Quake was here yesterday. <laughs> Quake said he understand the fans when you've been cheering for a losing franchise for that long. <laughs> Hell yeah, you're supposed to lose your mind when Kevin Durant go down. <laughs> said, we, we ain't won ever. We finally out. And then the best player go down. We got a better chance here. Yeah. <laughs> he did say that. Ah, uh, uh-huh. for the Redskins ah, for a minute. He, said if, a, he yeah. said if an old lady, 88 years old, she a cowboy fan, I'm pushing her down the chair. I'm pushing her down some steps. <laughs> he said, I'll do it, because if she get in that building, she'll give more inspiration. Yes. <laughs> and we were yeah, also got all that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't care. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, they were wrong. They know they were wrong. They Come know. on, Golden mm-hmm. State. Yeah. Warm them. And don't let Steph get hot. Don't off the gate. I'm telling you, it's gonna be tough. If him and Clay get oh, the hit right off the bat, oh, it's gonna go down. Oh. and Drake don't bet not say nothing to Draymond. Anyway. Don't say nothing. <laughs> no, for sure. No, leave him. Trash. Draymond can't get Trash. no more technical. He can't get none. He gonna be nice. He gonna be out. He gonna yeah. be out. He, if he if he won't be playing game seven, if he get another tech, so he good. 
All right, so coming up next at 34 after the hour, time to talk about the mentoring camp, Steve. We talked to touched on a little bit already, but uh, we're going to kick off. Uh, this is it, kicking off the Steve and Marjorie mentoring camp this week in Georgia. Steve is there. We'll talk about it right after Boys this. will be here today at 3. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, this week kicks off the Steve and Marjorie Harvey mentoring camp. The mission of the camp is to teach young men principles of manhood and, of course, to create responsible leaders. So, Steve, we got to ask you, how excited are you and are you ready? Yeah, man, it's just so uh, it's a very uh, it's an important thing, man. I, I love these boys. I love the changes I see in their lives. Some tremendous stories. A kid sent me a picture today. Uh, not Nick Young. What's my cat's name? He's, he was on top of the plaque at Morehouse with his graduation hat on. He said, Mr. Harvey, we did it. No, because I helped him through school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah. he said, Mr. Harvey, we did it. And the boy sitting on top of the Morehouse sign with his graduation cap on. He graduated from Morehouse. That's what Just another about, little Steve. dude that's been coming to the program for years. Uh, that's an accomplishment. Definitely. I told Man. you about the young cat that's uh, doing the closing remarks on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yes. At the camp. Uh-huh. uh-huh. This young man uh, got his call into the ministry uh, eight years ago at 16 years old. He got called by God to the ministry. He's a minister in L.A. He does pop-up shops for uh, millennials, Mm -hmm. and he's doing the closing ceremony. He surprised me at the camp. And then I got another cat that does all the pictures for the camp. He he came up yesterday. We surprised him paying for his last year of college because he he wasn't going to be able to go. And so we just took it over and paid for his final year of college, man, so he could go to school. It's just a lot of lives, man, out here get changed with these mm-hmm. boys, you know. Mm-hmm. And let me encourage everybody, you don't have to be famous or wealthy to change a boy's life. You just have to be able to sit him down and tell him about manhood. That's all they want to know. They just want to know how to be men. And if you can show it to them, it can change their life. I love it. Great love program. It. Excited. Mm-hmm. Gonna be not, well, right now I'm barbecuing, so yeah, we, yeah, we know. Yeah. barbecues yeah, we know at this time barbecue. of the morning, though. <laughs> That's <not>? crazy. <laughs> How Shark, are you co- uh, Shark. Oh, I'm doing just doing chicken and salmon right now. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. But who you cooking for, dog? Sounds like himself. <laughs> who all no. want to come through here? Oh. oh, okay. My son is here, Beatty here. Boomerang here. That's five people. <laughs> <laughs> That's five you some, already. You got some dude from Macon. You got some uh-huh. Earl Camels, though? Couldn't find none, man. But do you uh, still eat that, Steve? What? <laughs> Girl, you know the rules change. Girl, I know. That's what I wanted him to say. <laughs> say what? There's barbecue, man. Surely, I don't know. <laughs> Meal restrictions at the ranch? <laughs> <laughs> what else do you throw out the window when you get to the ranch? Do you cuss uh, down there much? No, nah, not that much. Just air. <laughs> air and air. Yes. <laughs> Describe your outfit, Steve, looking like Indiana Jones down there. Oh, he, got that, he got that knife uh-huh, on his side. Uh-huh. Both of them. Uh-huh. I'll I put the knife on as soon as I finish radio. Yes. Both of them. <laughs> uh, it's for cool? the boys, you know. For the boys? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, you're not whipping me. <laughs> Steve. You think, you think they're going to try you? Are you crazy? <laughs> they ain't finna no, try you. No, I'm hey. not going to stab you. Dale. It's a deterrent. Right, right. You yeah. see these knives, you just go jump on somebody else. Yeah, you fall back. <laughs> for you don't sure. care who they jump yeah. on. It just ain't going to be on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, the knives ain't for stabbing nobody. It's a deterrent. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. You so know, now- it's like insurance. You don't really need insurance till you die. Right. Until <laughs> <laughs> you die. So do you have on camouflage, khakis, jeans, what? Today is all khaki right now. I probably, yeah, I probably going to go change into some camo. Uh-huh. You know, and uh, some acid shirts and. Uh-huh. You know, I got some Columbia shirts, my fishing shirts. I'm supposed to go fishing with my buddy today, Brass, uh, Bass Pro, come down here. Kendall oh, yeah. comes down. Mm-hmm. Probably go fishing story. with him today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little hard for me to sit on the boat right now because I got to squat to get down on the boat. Oh, yeah. You're that ain't so up. bad, but it's getting up, though, is the hell. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and take two hear, more Steve. of them oxymorons. <laughs> and I'll be fine. 
Huh? Did you be <laughs> fishing? We gotta, fishing, we gotta go. Mara. Stop saying that. We gotta go. All right, listen. Nephew Tommy is up next with the prank phone call. That's coming up right after this. Crazy. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, uh, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, I'm not letting him go without a fight. All right? Uh Okay. But right now, the nephew is in the building with another ignorant prank phone call. What do you have for us today, nephew? Shirley, we're going to call the preacher's wife today. Uh Uh-oh. The preacher's wife. Wife, I mean, I mean, it's it's time, Carla. That I just start delving into a little bit more. <laughs> it's, time. it's time. It's time. <laughs> what do you Go mean? a little deeper. You can't call the preacher's wife. Delving. <laughs> D e the preacher's wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not finna do this spelling bee because I know I ain't gonna win. The preacher's wife. Here it is. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach a uh, sister Angela. Sister Angela please. This is she. How you doing? My name is Brother Clayton. I'm, I'm calling you from uh, Greater Baptist Church. How you doing this morning? Oh, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. Good to hear from you, brother. Yeah, listen, I, I know that um, your husband, Reverend, uh, Reverend Jonathan, is actually uh, one of the candidates that we may be choosing to be our pastor since yes. our past pastor has stepped down. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of my husband. Um, uh, I think he'll make a very good candidate, as a matter of fact. Here at the church, we've been asking a lot of the deacons and and, and, um, assistant uh, uh, ministers here have been asking different questions, different things that they would be doing once they uh, became pastor. You know, like your first 100 days, what would you try and change here at the church or try and make better, so to speak? Did did you need to speak to my husband? He's not here right now. Did you need to speak to him? No, not right now. What what we've decided to do, uh, uh, Sister Angela, is actually call the wives and ask them a few questions oh okay that's a little different sure and we don't we don't want to take up too much of your time you know a a lot of times uh if a pastor is stressed at home nine times out of ten he's likely to be stressed at the church so I, i guess my 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 biggest question to you is is your husband stressed at home uh no not that i know of i he eats regularly. He's on a good diet. You know, he gets his, goes to the doctor regularly. He gets his physical. Um, he's pretty good at home. I don't have a reason to believe that he's stressed. But I, he certainly hasn't brought anything to my attention. Okay, not. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, uh, I don't think you follow me, S- sister. Sister Angela, what I'm saying is, is, is he stressed behind closed doors? Is he stressed in in that fashion? Um, I'm not. I'm not too sure. I follow you. You say behind closed doors. What is? What exactly did you mean by that? Is, is he is he stressed at, uh, in, in in y'all's relations? Is he stressed? Are you asking me about my personal business, brother? Well, what I'm saying is, if he's stressed at home, he'll be stressed at the church. And if he's stressed at the church, then the members are stressed. Then the congregation is stressed. Um, so the stress starts with you. Excuse me? If, if you are making sure that he's all right at home, he's going to be all right at the church. Um, I'm sorry, brother. What, what was your name? Brother Clayton. Brother Clayton. I appreciate uh-huh. you um, conducting whatever interviews you guys need to conduct with the candidates' wives. Uh, I do think that's pretty much personal territory, and I really don't want to answer those kind of questions. It's, it's, it's not personal Sister Angela, when there's so many other people involved. See, that's why I'm asking you the question, is your man Brother stressed Clayton. behind Brother Clayton, clo- I could assure you yes. that my husband is not stressed at home if I get your drift. Okay. He is not stressed behind closed doors, brother. And I would appreciate you if you don't call with these kind of questions. Are you asking other candidates why these kind of questions? Well, uh, I was the one uh, 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 dedicated to call to give you a call, and that's the question that I decided to come up with because I want to know if a man is going to be stressed because if he's going to have tension at, at the church, then, then the congregation is going to have tension, the church is going to have tension, and the church cannot brother move Clayton. forward in the direction on which brother we're Clayton. going. My mm-hmm. husband and I have been married 25 years, and they've been 25 good years, if you get my drift, okay? Oh, he is okay. not stressed at home. And whatever goes on at home, my husband has sense enough not to take it to the church. That is not something he's going to do. 
So you don't but have see, to that, worry about anybody else being stressed at the congregation, in the pulpit, nowhere, okay? We no, have our stuff together at home, and I appreciate it if you don't ask me those kind of questions. Now, but you can sometimes, find just ask me. But sometimes a, 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 a woman does not realize that, that her husband is stressed. You understand? You, there, there's a possible way that you don't know that he's stressed. Brother, so how please, can you get... Huh? Let me get your phone. As a matter of fact, let me get your full name. What's your first name? Let's just go with Brother Clayton right now. And could you please answer this question? How can you guarantee that he is fully not stressed? Brother Clayton? <clears throat> Let me call on the Lord real quick. Hold on. Brother Clayton, I'm an honorable woman. I'm, just... I'm a woman who stands by my man. Okay? But you okay. are asking okay. me some questions that's uh, very personal, very private, very confidential. You are asking me questions that, that, that are a question of the sanctity of my marriage, okay? My husband is not stressed. And if I need how, to be uh, real clear, be... I don't send him away from my home stressed, okay? How do you not? I know. But what are you doing to make sure it's... that it's less stressed? Brother Clayton, I'm about to end this phone call, okay? Now, if you... No, we're not going to end this phone call until that we know. We, I need to know that Reverend Jonathan is not stressed at home. They put, they assigned me to talk to you, and that's so what, what I'm going to do, and I, I'm going to leave. Okay, he is not stressed. I don't know who told you that. The man is not stressed. Is he acting stressed around you? He's you're, not acting he, stressed he, at home. I bet you. I bet you he's stressed because you're stressing me right now. Now, we're both stressed out. How can we understand that that man is not stressed? That's the end of this conversation. Do you understand me? Give me your full name right now. Give me some intimate details, and then I'll give you my number. You crossed the line. You wait till my husband gets here. If this is going to cost him a candidacy, then then so be it. We'll find another church. I'd have some choice words for you right now. Ooh, Brother Clayton. I will give you my name right now. Do you have a pen? Yes, I'm going to write it right now. The letter N, N is in Nancy. Nancy. E, mm-hmm. P. You're moving slow. What? I know how to spell now. Talk up faster. N E P H E W. What kind of name is that? N- nephew. Your name is Nephew Clayton? My name ain't Nephew Clayton. My name is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your husband, Reverend Jonathan. Hold on. <laughs> said this is nephew Tommy. <laughs> this is oh nephew Tommy. Oh my god. <laughs> From the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your oh. husband got me to prank phone call you. Oh Lord, I'm gonna kill that. Oh Lord, I don't mean that. I don't mean that. Oh my god. Boy, y'all didn't stress me. Y'all didn't stress me this morning. I can't believe I let him get me. You know, I have heard these pranks before. I Oh my God. Tommy, I will tell you, if this was 25 years ago, brother, I <laughs> cussed up a storm. I'm so glad I'm a saved woman. <laughs> well, listen, oh. listen. Can I ask you one more thing? Yes. What is the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> 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 The yeah, preacher's wife got to make sure that the preacher oh, is uh, not stressed out at home. You're supposed to be relieving his stress at the house. Are you Man. doing your okay. first lady duties? You understand right. what I'm saying? Is there a church you can even walk in? I don't think so, Junior. No, Junior. Uh-huh. No. Uh-uh. I'm, uh, no, I go online, Junior. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's safe. I'm an online yeah. member. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's very safe, Tommy. <laughs> yes, got to be mm-hmm. online. Mm-hmm. Well, um, boy, listen, coming up, we got a lot of stuff. We want to say thank you, nephew. Up next, this strawberry letter subject, I'm not letting him go without a fight. We'll delve into it, to use the nephew's oh. word, right after this. Oh, that's how it goes. Yes. <laughs> D-E-L-V. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you have advice, if you need advice, we have the advice. But if you need it on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to Steve Harvey FM and click Submit Strawberry Letter. All right, we could be reading yours live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. I'm not letting him go without a fight. Dear Stephen Shirley, I am a 23-year-old woman, and one of my closest friends turned out to be a dirty skank that stole my man. 
Two years ago, my best friend came to visit me, and we went out every night and kicked it. Well, one of those nights, I introduced her to a guy that I have a crush on. I caught the two of them flirting with each other, and I went off on her after we left the club. We got into a huge fight and haven't spoken since. For years, I've been flirting with this guy, but he never paid attention to me. I'm beautiful and fine as hell, so I don't understand why he hasn't pursued me. I only see him when I go out, and he's bought me a drink before, but that's it. Now I've lost a good friend over this guy, and he is not even interested in me. The other day, a mutual friend of me and my ex-friend called me and said that apparently my ex-friend is dating the guy that I have a crush on. She told me to go look at her Facebook page. I went to her Facebook page, and there was a picture of the two of them, and the caption was, I said yes. They are engaged. This woman stole the man of my dreams, the man I have loved since high school. I was mad as hell, but my friend told me I was overreacting because he was never my man. Here is what I need your advice. Here is where I need your advice. I found out the date, time, location of their wedding, and I feel like I am fully justified in my anger, and I intend to show up and act up at their ceremony. I can't decide if I'm going to write the word whore on her car or light the wedding cake on fire, but I'm going to do something. She ruined my life, so I want to ruin her wedding. Please tell me that you understand my anger. Maybe he just needs to know how I feel since I never told him. What should I do? Please advise. Okay. <laughs> no one has ruined your life, first of all. You're only 23, okay? You're only 23 years old, and you are crazy. Yeah, you, you really. Th this is crazy ridiculous. I mean, for real. If you're thinking about doing any of the stuff you talked about in this letter, I, I mean, how dare you even consider ruining their wedding? That's so ridiculous. You are a hater in every sense of the word. Your mutual friend was right. How could she steal the man of your dreams when he was never yours to begin with? You just had a crush on the guy. He barely gave you the time of day. He was not interested in you. You said that in your letter, in your own words. He was, however, interested in your best friend. You had no claim on this man. The only way she could have taken him from you is if you were in a relationship with him, okay? That's how that works. And at last I checked, buying you a drink at a club does not constitute a relationship, okay? Now, your crazy behind ha has probably lost a good friend over this foolishness. This is really crazy. And please don't show up at her wedding. Let them have their happy day. His family members are going to be there. Her family members are going to be there. A and I'm sure they're not going to let you write the word whore on her car, as you've suggested, or, or set the wedding cake on fire. Both those ideas are just insane. Come on. Stay at home. That's my advice to you. Stay at home. Netflix and chill. You still have lots of time to uh, find a man and all of that and let him find you all of that. Stay at home and leave these people alone. Steve? This letter is for everybody out there that thought something was wrong with them. <laughs> this letter is for everybody out there who thought that your life wasn't going the way you wanted it to. <laughs> this is a letter from a crazy person. Mm. This is a letter from a person that requires some form of medical attention. <laughs> I need to go deep with this letter, but I can't, cause she didn't go deep. Well, it was just my imagination. Ooh, my Once oh, my again, <laughs> running away with me. It was just my imagination. Running away with me. That song popped in my head the whole time I was listening to this letter. This 23-year-old girl crazier than a damn bat flying out of a cave in the daytime. <laughs> <laughs> Why is your ass out here in the daylight? You know good and damn well you supposed to be hanging in the cave somewhere. You done flapped your nutty ass out here in the daytime. Here's your word, Carla, nutty. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with her? First of all, you at a club 
with your girlfriend, with a guy you're interested in. You catch them flirting. Y'all have an a argument, and y'all ain't spoken years. Now, he's, then you said right here, I'm beautiful and fine as hell, so I don't understand why he ain't pursued me. Let's take that sentence right there. I'm beautiful and fine as hell, and I don't see why he ain't pursued me. Well, let me let me bring you down a little bit. Mm. You ain't as fine and beautiful as you think you are. Notice you said, I, I'm mm. fine. Anybody else oh, said say. that? Anybody else? Oh, you <laughs> say. Yeah, ain't, no, ain't nobody wrote in with you. Then. This ain't a group letter. This, this Your friend didn't write this letter in. You wrote this letter. You're not as fine as you think you are. He met your friend and was enamored with your friend and not you. Y'all ain't ever had a relationship. Now, you and this girl ain't spoken in years. A girlfriend of yours called you and told you to go on Facebook. It's a picture of him, and she said yes. What's wrong with you? Hang on, Steve. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have part two of your response coming up at 23 after the hour. Subject of today's strawberry letter, I'm not letting him go without a fight. <laughs> we'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, let's recap today's strawberry letter. Uh, I'm not letting him go without a fight. We don't have to recap nothing. This nutty-ass woman <laughs> that's 23 years old and wrote a damn letter in talking about she was interested in a guy at that's a club, a introduced it to her girlfriend, <laughs> yes. and then he started flirting with her. She cussed him out. Now, her and the girl ain't spoke in years. She failed to mention that her and the dude ain't spoke unless he see her at a club and buy her a drink. Right. Now, she don't understand why none of this is going on because she beautiful and fine as hell. But not to <laughs> him, no. <laughs> see, uh-uh. let us want what we want. Right. You know, now you ain't spoken to this girl. You've been flirting with this guy, but he's never paid attention to me because he don't want you. <laughs> If ladies, if you flirting with a guy and he ain't paying no attention to you, cause he don't even want you, he don't even want to have sex with you. Mm-hmm. That's, that's yeah. and at twenty yeah. some years old, that's a real wake up call. That's saying for you. a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you flirting with him, he don't even pay attention to you. So listen to me, young ladies. He don't even want to have sex with you, but he a decent guy, so he just leaving you alone. Plus, I think he know you crazy. He got to. <laughs> he got to. So I don't understand why he ain't pursued me. I see him when I go out to the club. He done bought me a drink before. Mm-hmm. That's it. Now, the title of this letter is, let me go him. back here. I'm not letting him go without a fight. Yeah. You're not letting who go. <laughs> you ain't ever had him. Right. See, in order to let something go, you must have possession of it. Mm-hmm. See, ain't nobody told you that. But you've never possessed taking possession of him so he not yours. Now, your girlfriend calls you and tells you to go on Facebook. You ain't talked to this woman in years. You look up. It's a picture of him and her, and the picture, and the picture says, I said yes. This woman stole the man of my dreams, the man I have loved since high school. See, the man of my dreams, you were not the woman of his dreams. A man you have loved since high school. He ain't ever loved you. Well, it was just my imagination. <laughs> Come on, temptation. Once again, running away with me. See, I like old songs because they help. Now, here's where I need your advice. I found out the date, time, and the location of their wedding. I feel like I'm fully justified in my anger, and I intend to show up and act up at their ceremony. I can't decide if I'm going to write the word whore on her car oh. I light the wedding cake on fire. But oh. I'm going to do something. She's ruined my life, so I want to ruin her wedding. Please tell me you understand. No. No, we don't. No. <laughs> my anger. Maybe he just needs to know how I feel since I never told him. What should I do? All right, now let me just cut to the chase right there. I'm assuming these is black people you talking about. You gonna go get your ass whooped? Uh-huh. You yeah. <laughs> you're gonna yeah, run smack go. dab up into an ass whooping. Somebody's you. gift. Uh-huh. You gonna let you know somebody paid for this wedding. Mm-hmm. You gonna set the cake on fire. Everybody waiting on the cake. Huh? Yes. <laughs> you gonna set the cake on fire. You be better off turning over the ice cream. But what you better not do. Just bring your ass over here <laughs> and set this damn cake on fire. Turn on the ice cream. You be, I can give you a lot of little things you can try. Knock a, knock a bouquet over. <laughs> Do that right there. 
Bust some of them China dishes. Clap you, clap two China plates together and bust them. Do that right there. But don't you dare take your half ignorant ass over there <laughs> and set that damn cake on fire. That girl mama gonna whoop your ass. Her aunts is gonna whoop your ass. It's gonna be so many women whooping your ass because you don't. You deserve an ass whooping. I need advice. You don't write hoe on this girl. The girl ain't no whore. That's so crazy. The girl, he never cheated on you. He never wanted you. He ain't ever wanted you. He don't want you now. You gonna ruin this girl's wedding cause she ruined your what? No, you didn't have a life. And the reason you don't have a life, cause you ain't trying to have one. Mm. Why don't you go get your life? Find somebody that love your crazy ass. <laughs> now let me tell you something, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard, exactly. It's gonna be hard. Especially when they find out you the one wrote this letter. Uh. Now little girl, you 23 years old, don't do nothing this stupid. No. Write this off. Let bygones be bygones. The man never wanted you. The girl ain't done nothing to you. She was your friend and your man wanted her. But he wasn't your man. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You was interested in him. You had a crush on him. He ain't had no crush on you. He saw your girlfriend. That's what he wanted. They getting married. You don't need to go down to this wedding. But I'm telling you what, take your ass down there if you want to. Uh -huh. Go down there to the wedding and take some matches and set them black people cake on fire. <laughs> and watch this here. Your ass finna be on TMZ and you ain't you even famous. Get your ass. You gonna be, but you gonna damn sure be on uh, World Star. You gonna damn <laughs> sure be on that. Yes. I, you gonna damn sure be on that. You might not make TMZ because you ain't famous, but your ass gonna be on World Star. I can promise you that. The whole ass woman gonna be on World Star. <laughs> you and that cake, you gonna have so much cake. You got cake, icing everywhere. All right, Steve, we got to get out of here. Uh, email us and uh, Instagram us your thoughts on today's strawberry letter. It's they going to put cake on their shoe before they kick you dead up. You hear me? Don't go down to them black people's wedding. Sit your ass down. Go to Steve Harvey <sighs> FM or check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up at 46 after the hour from Set the Set the black people cake on fire. Our girl, You, you know why you ain't never heard of that? Because you bet not. Uh-uh. Okay. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, coming up at the top of the hour, it's Carla's reality update. But right now, from the talk, Steve, go ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, from the talk, Cheryl Underwood. Thank you, Steve Harvey. And while we talking, Steve Harvey, um, I would like to say happy pre-Father's Day to all the fathers out in the world. Yay, all right, all right. Yeah. All right, Underwood. Isn't girl. it Father's Day? With, Junior, you got some kids? Uh-uh, no, I was just saying that was a nice thing. Oh, I was, you know. <laughs> it's Tommy, Tommy. Tommy. What's up, baby? Don't you have some little sharp dressed kids that be wearing them skinny pants? Don't yeah, you have I some do. little <laughs> I know you have some little sharp dressed little children out there always ready for church. They got briefcases in preschool, sharp Tommy little kids, little you know. Clean. Don't he? Because Tommy's son can wear his clothes. Uh, <laughs> uh, I did not I admit I didn't see that coming. I Walk saw right it all into coming. that. I, saw I, didn't, it. I Walk, didn't. Walk right into that with an ascot and a cape, Steve Harvey. <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> Stop playing. <laughs> so listen. Mm -hmm. Ladies, okay, when y'all come to, to uh, Levity Live, West Nyack, New York, I'm going to be telling all the good pre-Father Day jokes. But before your man get to come to the show, bring your man to the show. Bring extra money so he can get chicken wings, everything he love. See, ladies, don't just wait till Sunday to celebrate Father's Day with your, with your man, with the father of your children. And even if he got children by somebody else and you with him, so Charlotte's callers, don't you think we need to set it out for our man just because he dropped off something with some other gal before we got together? That's only fair. Square business. Stop being selfish. So it's Father's Day, whatever your man like. But start right now. Let's start right now. Let's have four, five days of Father. Wouldn't y'all love that, Tommy? Hell no. I would love that, but we that's not going to happen. We get shorted. No, all you got to do is like get a sandwich. Day. Okay, you get a sandwich on Father's Thursday, Friday, they get a massage. Cancel Father's Day. Wait, just cancel Father's Day. Let's quit playing. We ain't canceling Father's what? Day. I love my daddy. And you know do how many times I done so said, who's your daddy in my life, Steve Harvey? We got to have Father's Day. We got to have Father's Day. Father. What? 
What? Hey, Junior. What you doing <laughs> saying who's your daddy? Why would you be I'm going to say it to Junior. I'm going to say it to Junior. Hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Junior in a little diaper and put some baby powder on him and carry him around on my hip. <laughs> With some hair on. What? All right. We got to go. <laughs> Thank you. Stop trying to block me and Junior. Stop Thank playing, Shirley. You don't want me to have nobody. <laughs> Stop playing. Stop playing. Stop playing. When Junior show up in the big wheel, you know I, d- I got it, right? We got to you know, go. Uh, coming up at the top of the hour, Cheryl Underwood, Carla's reality what? update right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. She is here. Carla Farrell with what reality update? All right. So thank you, nephew. Uh, Apollo, you guys remember the ex-husband of Real Housewives of Atlanta, the yeah. ex-reality star Phaedra Parks. Well, mm-hmm. last week he was released from prison. And he is currently living at a halfway house. He served oh, five good. years in oh, prison. Okay. Mm-hmm. He good, was originally though. sentenced eight. Uh, eight years. Uh-huh. He was originally sentenced for eight mm. years. Apollo was released from prison. He's in a halfway house in Philadelphia. And he'll remain there till October 15th. And uh, if you recall, he married Phaedra back in, I think it's back in 2009, and they split in 2014, right before he left for prison. They have two sons. Their divorce was finalized uh, in 2017. So um, Apollo was arrested in January of 2014. He pleaded guilty to bank fraud and identity theft I wish three months will, later. Man. I hope yeah. the brother get out, man, and really get his life together, man. Yeah. And uh, he ain't a bad dude, man. I, w- I wish Apollo the best, man. I saw Phaedra at the Kentucky Derby. She was looking good, man. Can I tell you something, sweet. man? All them what? girls on the Housewives Atlanta, when mm-hmm. you meet them one on one, man, they some of the nicest, they cool, uh-huh. yeah. coolest they people. Are. Yeah, they're, they're mad cool. The, the yeah, Atlanta yeah. Housewives are some of the nicest, coolest people, man. Yep. Yeah. Candy True. is special. Oh, I like yeah, so Porsche. sweet. Yeah, I love Portia, Cynthia, all of them. But when mm-hmm. they turn that their camera on, Cynthia all of them. But when Nini, they cut that damn camera on, I don't know what happened to them. Well, they got to <laughs> turn up for TV, Steve. It's you know drama that. for yeah. TV. Damn. It's entertainment. What? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, speaking of Real Housewives, let's move over to Potomac, that franchise, Real Housewives of Potomac. I don't know uh, about this here show. You know this Giselle This is Giselle. Giselle. You know Giselle Bryant, Pastor Jamal Bryant's uh, okay. ex-wife. Uh, She's, I didn't know that. She came on my show. I didn't even know that. Yeah, she's beautiful. I love her. But she be wrong, like two left uh-huh. feet on this show. But I don't care. I love her so much. I love Giselle. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> she be damn wrong, Tommy. I be like, I oh, she clue. wrong. Oh, but she, she, um, she's the star of the show. And this particular episode, you know, Steve, they always go on a trip. So they went to uh, New Orleans. Uh, Giselle, you know, she's the Creole queen and her family, her dad's people, a uh, lot of heritage in New Orleans. And uh, it was her dad's 80th birthday. So they went down and had a big celebration in the Big Easy. Here's what we have learned. Karen and Giselle are still beefing. What you can't do is talk to Giselle about her ex, Sherman, especially Karen. She can't mention boundaries. She can't mention Sherman. Uh-huh. Because you know, Karen set up all these rules with Giselle on what she I can talk you to said her she was about. Uh, to Jamal. <laughs> X. Uh, she was once X. upon X. a time. X. X. X wife. And he's moved on and she's moved on. So she's been dating uh okay. different men. Who, who, who ex wife you talking about? Pastor Jamal Bryant's ex wife. Her name is Giselle I Bryant. Like Jamal Bryant. Are you listening at all? I'm yes. trying to put it together. It's very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> who is Sherman? They, he knows they nothing are about, He don't know nothing about <laughs> any of this. Who is Sherman? Who is Sherman? Who is Sherman? Sherman? You can't mention Sherman. No, Sherman is Giselle's ex-man. <laughs> Sherman She's from dated. the clump, Steve. From the clump. <laughs> Sherman clump. <laughs> <laughs> but I Hercules. thought you said she was Jamal's ex-wife. Oh, well, she has moved on, and he has too. She's dated since she's been divorced. She oh. can't date no more. <laughs> Well, I ain't know. You know, I ain't know what the hell the show was going to do. I think, I think, I think his hernia you. medicine has kicked in. One of those oxymorons. Yeah. He took. Yes. Blast. <laughs> if y'all don't know, <laughs> Steve had yeah. hernia surgery, yeah. and right now he's probably high. He must be uh, on it. He, he barbecuing. So damn <laughs> He barbecuing on drugs this right early, now. This early. This early in the morning, though. I saw my stomach. 
<laughs> when I came home, and uh-huh. they had all that iodine on me. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. You know, and then my wife crazy ass told me to shave before I go down there. I ain't even have to shave. They ain't <laughs> even go that low. So now I'm just sitting up here naked, look like a G.I. Joe. All right. Oh, <laughs> coming up, coming up, coming up, more ignorance on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Right after you, this, the 20 minutes after itching. the hour. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Hey, Carla, before we get to this IHOP story, shout out your uh, Instagram information. Thank you, Shirley. Uh Make sure you guys, you know, we talk about reality update every week. Hit me up at Lips by Carla, all social media. No, we're not talking about Steve's surgery and his hernia. (laughs) We're going to talk about. I don't know why not. It's more interesting than Sherman. (laughs) She just said you can't bring up Sherman no damn (laughs) more. So what did you think to bring that up for? Can't bring up my man Jamal. That's my dude. I like him. (laughs) That boy can can preach. Man. Oh, here cold. Shout here out to cold. Giselle. We love you, girl. He's All right, Shirley, what yeah. you got? All right, listen. I, <laughs> Thank you. Crazy. Ignorant. No, I look like ignorant. G.I. Joe. All right, listen. IHOP is now combining breakfast and burgers into one epic sandwich. It's called the Pancake Burger. What? Who in that room ain't said this was a bad idea? Who Pretty, was in that? Um, I don't know, though. Uh-oh, Check it. Let's listen, hear it listen, out, listen, Junior. Listen, listen, listen no, I know. Pretty much a double cheeseburger Jesus. with a pancake shoved in the middle. I'm not mad sure, yet. Yeah. People you know how like many pancakes. people going to be choking on this burger? That's a lot of bread, Shirley. Keep going. Okay. Yeah, just because you lost a couple of pounds, Tommy. Uh, uh, pancake <laughs> hard to eat, but they got no service. Yeah, he was 195. Now he, pancakes but wait a minute, too? Steve. He was 195. Now he's 182. So now he can talk. I'm 190. Oh, oh. On my way to no 182. Okay. <laughs> All right. Y'all quit letting him tell you these lies. That boy ain't no 182. <laughs> All right, well, I anyway. I said 182. She got it right. Fat ass lost 17 pounds that damn fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. More of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 33 after the hour, right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, this week kicks off the Steve and Marjorie Harvey Mentoring Camp. The mission of the camp is to teach young men principles of manhood and, of course, to create responsible leaders. So, Steve, we got to ask you, how excited are you and are you ready? Yeah, man, it's just so. It's an important thing, man. I, I love these boys. I love the changes I see in their lives. Some tremendous stories. A kid sent me a picture today. He's, he was on top of the plaque at Morehouse with his graduation hat on. He said, Mr. Harvey, we did it. No, because I helped him through school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And uh, he said, Mr. Harvey, we did it. And the boy sitting on top of the Morehouse sign with his graduation cap on. He graduated from Morehouse. That's what Just another about, little Steve. dude that's been coming to the program for years. Uh-huh. That's an accomplishment. Definitely. I told Man. you about the young cat that's uh, doing the closing remarks on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Yes. At the camp. This young man uh, got his call into the ministry eight years ago at 16 years old. He's a minister in L.A. He does pop-up shops for uh, millennials, Mm -hmm. and he's doing the closing ceremony. He surprised me at the camp. And then I got another cat that does all the pictures for the camp. He he came up yesterday. We surprised him paying for his last year of college because he he wasn't going to be able to go. It's just a lot of lives, man, out here get changed with these Mm -hmm. boys. And let me encourage everybody, you don't have to be famous or wealthy to change a boy's life. You just have to be able to sit him down and tell him about manhood. That's all they want to know. They just want to know how to be men. And if you can show it to them, it can change their life. I love it. Well, right now I'm barbecuing, so. Yeah, we we know. Who barbecues at this time of the morning, though? That's crazy. Describe your outfit, Steve, looking like Indiana Jones down there. He got that knife Uh on his side. uh Both of them. Uh I'll put the knife on as soon as I finish radio. Yes. Both of them. (laughs) Uh, it's for the cool? boys, you know. For the boys? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, you're not whooping me. <laughs> <laughs> you think they're going to try you? Are you crazy? <laughs> they ain't finna no, try you. I'm hey. not going to stab you. Dale. It's a deterrent. Right, right. You yeah. see these knives, you just go jump on somebody else. Yeah, you fall back. <laughs> for you don't sure. care who they jump yeah. on. It just ain't going to be on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, the knives ain't for stabbing nobody. It's a deterrent. Yeah. Uh-huh. You so know, now, it's like insurance. You don't really need insurance till you die. Right. Until <laughs> you die. So do you have on camouflage khakis, jeans, what? Today is all khaki right now. I probably, yeah, I'm probably going to go change into some camo. Uh-huh. You know, and uh, some acid shirts and. Uh-huh. You know, I got some Columbia shirts, my fishing shirts. I'm supposed to go 
fishing with my buddy today, Brass, uh, Bass Pro, come down here. Kendall. Oh, yeah. Comes down. Mm-hmm. Probably go fishing with him today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, we're coming back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show. As a matter of fact, this is our last break of the day. Steve's closing remarks. You don't want to miss it. It's been a good day. We'll be back at 49 after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, last break of the day on this first day of mentoring camp, Steve. Yeah. And uh, you're cooking meat already this early? Already, yeah. yeah. Barbecuing barbecue. for the boys. Yeah, the boys no come in today? I'm not barbecuing for the boys. That ain't for the boys. Uh-huh. That's for him no. and his crew. Oh, yeah. come out here. Oh no, I'm a mile and a half from the camp through the woods. Oh. Well you are. I gotta ride four wheelers to get to my place. (laughs) That's Yeah, you got to come through. You walk through here at night. You 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 got to be a special individual. If your name last name ain't Boone, I don't suggest you do that. (laughs) Or Jones. (laughs) Daniel to be exact. Uh, Oh, Daniel Daniel Boone. No, it ain't no light out here. It's black dog. Wow. Wow. Okay. There's some mm-hmm. stuff come out at night out here, boy. Like what? Like, I mean, everything. you know, it's wildlife out here. Just, Cantal- just, I mean, just... uh, antelopes. Oh. Antelope. Yeah. Antelope. We're in like, Georgia. Where have you seen a damn antelope? I don't antelope? know. Like, what? You said it's some stuff you. Those would be deer, Shirley. Oh, Little dear. damn antelopes. Oh. What are you talking about? Well, hey. Why is your city just, ass talking? It was just a question. I didn't know. <laughs> well, why would you yo, even ask yo, for an yo, antelope, yo, yo, though? Yo, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey. kicking in turn strong. It, turn it, yeah, hard, turn it down. Wait a minute. Wait, it wait a minute. Antelopes? Y'all, y'all don't find this shot. I understand. Where the deer and the antelope play, okay? that's They say that in the song. I don't. The song wasn't by the You know what that sound song is referring to, Shirley? Uh-uh. It ain't Georgia. Oh, okay. Home on, yeah, home on the range. Yeah, home on the range. Home on the range. This ain't a range. Oh, it's a range. Don't <laughs> be trying to fix it. Go straight. Ooh, stretch it, Shirley. Stretch Get it. it. <laughs> anyway, you know, let me just say you this to you. You all are such uh, haters. Y'all know they so mean. <laughs> just in closing, let me say this to everybody. Uh, the purpose of this mentoring camp is to change the lives and the directions of young men. Now, you don't have to be famous. You don't have to have money. You don't have to be uh, uh, any level of success. You just have to know what it is to be a man. I don't care what your job title is. I don't care what your position in life is. I don't care how much money you make. If you can grab one boy that you see that may be going the wrong way or could just use some advice, If you just stop him and pull him to the side, man, you can make a huge difference in this young man's life. Everybody can be a mentor. You don't have to come to my camp to be a mentor. You don't have to be any of that. You don't have to do any of that to be a mentor. Just grab a boy and change his life. Tell him, I say, hey, look, man, you know how I stop a lot of young dudes? I used to see him in the airport and I used to go, hey, man, you look like you're going to be something. Pull your pants up. Let me talk to you. Man, that little dude, man, just started tucking his shirt in. Man, Steve Harvey talking to me. I said, yeah, man, tighten your belt up so we can talk. He, without question, he just, man, what you been telling me? I just said, look, man, I see some potential in you. What you trying to be? Huh? I said, I see some potential in you. What are you trying to be? I said, here, man, let me give you a little bit of advice. And I just started talking to him from there. If you see a dude on your block, man, and he just always seemed like he going the wrong way, just say, young man, can I talk to you for a minute? Listen, if you ever want to talk to somebody, come by my house. This is my number. Call me. You're welcome. Just ring my doorbell, man. I want to sit down and share some stuff with you. And just start talking to him about manhood. Talk to him about some of the mistakes you made along the way. You know, tell him some of your experiences about manhood, about girls, about making decisions, good and bad. That, you know, that that choices is always going to be in front of him, and it's up to him to make the right decision. You can change somebody's life by merely doing that. We have an obligation. We have a problem in our community that only we can solve. The government is not coming. They're not. This current administration could care less. And then with the politics, can I tell you something? No administration has really cared about us. Not a single one. So this is a problem that we can take care of ourselves. But it's going to take all of us, all us men in here, to become better at it. If you are a father, and you are not active in your child's life, please, man, make a phone call and start the process. Now, there may be some healing that's got to go on. 
It might have to be an exchange of words that's got to go on. But, man, at the end of the day, your son, your daughter would like to know that you care. They really do. So every man that's out there that's a father, on this coming Father's Day, make a move. Make a move to be what God created you to be. Make a move to fatherhood. If you are not active in your child's life, this Father's Day, get active. Let that be your mission today. Because if I could just get every father that was a father to just be a daddy, I wouldn't have to spend this money and this time trying to change these boys around. Because every one of these boys got a father somewhere. Every last one of them. So my question to you is, where are you fathers? Where are we? Now I got, man, that circumstances happen. And I ain't judging you. I know, man, that life just happens. I know sometimes, man, the mother makes it awful challenging to get to these children. I know that. I know, man, they use that you ain't paid child support against you. I know that. I, I know, man. And y'all women, y'all got to stop that, man. Because a man don't have the money, man, don't mean he ain't got the time. And he don't know something that could be of value to your child. So if you stop using the children as pawns, that would be a great help. But fathers, take the initiative. Go through her mother, her grandmother. But find your way back to these boys. Find your way back to these girls. Make a difference, man. They deserve to know that you think of them, that you love them, that you're sorry for the way things turned out, and start a relationship with your child today. For, for both your sons and your daughters, it'd be a great thing. That would be the best Father's Day gift you could give them. Quit waiting on somebody to give you something. You know they play a short on Father's Day. That's it. Y'all have a great weekend. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 